Good morning. I'm alone in my house, which is rare <laughs> these days. <laughs> so I'm taking this opportunity to try to get a video out that will hopefully have slightly less background burping than some of my previous ones. Um, <clears throat> I've got a couple of things to share today. I've been out of town for, uh, well, quite a while actually, and it was sort of unexpected. I was, um, my mother had to have some surgery, and it was just a simple endoscopic thing. She was supposed to spend one night in the hospital and go home. Well, there were complications, and my sister and aunt live in the same town that she does, and they usually take care of her, but they both had some stuff going on, so I drove up there for what I thought would be three or four days just to stay with mom in the hospital, you know, and, and see to whatever she needed there. But um, there were more complications. There was a second surgery, and I ended up staying 10 days. <laughs> okay, I love my mother, and we get along great, but we don't see each other often, just a couple times a year, which is probably why we get along great. Um, 10 days, locked in a hospital room with her 24-7, left me a shell of a woman, can I just say that? <laughs> I am so glad that I was there, that I was able to be there. Um, you know, I always want to be there for her if she needs me, but it's not easy. And, you know, even if you have, like, the best mom in the universe, two adult women cohabitating for any length of time is always a challenge. And, um... Yeah, it was a challenge. But anyway, that's why I've been away, and so many of you have expressed concern about where I was, and that's where I was, and, and it, you know, it was good to be missed. I appreciate that, and everything's good now. Mom's fine. She's back home. She's on the mend, and cranky as a bear, so that's a good sign. So um, it's all good. But when I went on the trip, I had it wasn't like a pre-planned thing. I had planned it. Um, several days before, but I only had just a few days to, you know, get stuff together, get packed. I knew I would be staying in a hospital room, which means I would have to schlep my own stuff up to the room and back. You know, there's like, there's no valet. <laughs> there's no concierge. I was not going to get a bellhop to help me with my bags, that type of thing. So I had to pack really light. And, of course, I only thought I was going to be there for maybe three days. So I didn't, I didn't take a lot of clothes or anything, but I knew I needed art supplies. I took more art supplies than clothes. That's normal, right? Yeah, yeah, I thought, I thought so. Um, I took my bobble blanket that I've been crocheting, and I also took, I wanted to do some kind of a little journal deal while I was there. Um, so here's here's what I decided on. Let's just cut to the chase. Get to the point, Shannon. Just say it. Get to the point. All right. Here we go. This is what I took. I bought this little thing. Y'all may have seen these. Um, this little holder. It's supposed to be like a purse organizer where you put all of your purse stuff in it. And then when you change purses, you just pull this out and put it in the new purse, right? You've, we've seen all these everywhere, all different kinds. Okay, I don't really need that. I don't ever change purses. Um, I've shown you the inside of my purse. It's not pretty, but it works for me. I, I don't really need this as a purse organizer. But on Amazon, it was like $3.50. And that was with shipping. It included, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it had, you know, those words that I love to hear, free super saver shipping. I just live for free super saver shipping. And so, yeah, it was 3 Three forty eight I think is what I paid for it, and the price varies, but it's usually in the three to four dollar range. Um, it takes a little over a week to get it because it's shipped from Mars uh, or Hong Kong. you know the shipping's about the same either way, Mars or Hong Kong. So um, it took a while, and it's worth maybe the three dollars that I paid for it. I did not expect much. It's coming apart, or is it? Yeah, right here, see the little seam is coming apart. You know what? For three bucks, whatever. I can sew that back up. I can glue it. I, I don't care. It was three bucks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm totally happy with it anyway. I'll try to remember to post a link if these are still available in case you want one because, you know, it's not fancy. It's not extremely sturdy and well-made. But 
um, for three dollars, I, I, I've gotten way more than my three bucks out of it. Let me put it that way. Um, and I'm pretty hard on my stuff like this, you know. This I slept this in a big bag and and slept on it, and you know, I, I kind of it kind of went through the ringer. So all things considered, that one little seam rip is not bad. So overall, I'm happy with it. Um, here's what I put in it. I, I knew I needed my um, date book, my planner, calendar thing, and look, it fits just perfect. See, this is what I love about it, and my planner is made out of a, uh, well now I can't remember, composition book. It's either a composition book or a, one of those, uh, no, it looks like a cahier. It looks like a Moleskine cahier, which is the same size as a composition book, so that will fit in your little organizer. And I'll just run through my planner real quick. I've shown this before, but I've probably made a couple of changes because I am constantly tweaking and changing it because that's what we do, right? And I got this little smash book headband thing on a clearance rack, and I've stuck a couple of my, you know, multi pins in it. So I've got that. Um, I don't. I don't think I've made any major changes, but I can't remember if I showed you these or not, and so I may do it again. I always have my colored glue sticks in here and this little pair of scissors, but I keep these too. And you don't have to go out and buy these. Honestly, you can use colored pencils. Any kind of a good, a soft waxy one like a Prismacolor would be better. Some of the cheaper Crayola brands are hard, and you really want a soft, waxy pencil. So if you want to do um, what I'm going to show you with these pencils, just go ahead and splurge, pay the dollar for the Prismacolor one, and get you a soft, waxy one. Or you can get these. These are from Stedler. They are dry. They're called dry highlighter pencils, and they're three colors. They came with caps, and, you know, I lost those. Um, and they may have more colors. I don't know where I got these. I think that I got them like at Mardell's or someplace like that because they're used to, or maybe like the Family Christian Store. I don't know because they're excellent Bible highlighters. They, because um, it's a pencil. It won't bleed through really thin paper. So um, that's, that. so I use these for uh, Bible highlighting, and then I lost one one time, and I had my colored pencils with me in church because, you know, I carry colored pencils to church because I like to doodle. And I found that colored pencils would work the same. So, you know, neon colored colored pencils are really good. So anyway, here's, here's what I like about them is if you are using a planner and you've got some, you know, you're using something like this that has thin pages and um, maybe you didn't... Uh, glue several together to make them thicker for, you know, whatever reason. But you can use these pencils as a highlighter and just do this little number and there you've got some highlighting that doesn't bleed through because, you know, it's a pencil. So there's you a um, an alternative to highlighters that bleed through thin paper. Just pick you up some of these dry highlighters or just use neon colored soft colored pencils. So there is your tip o the day. And I'm still loving my planner. I'm still, you know, tweaking it and changing it and adding stuff and I have some new ideas for next year, but I'm going to, you know, as long as I'm using it, I'm going to keep it up and I'll I'll use one for next year too. So me and my planner are getting along good. But the thing about this in my planner, I keep a lot of supplies because I have an upstairs downstairs situation. You know, my art room's upstairs, my planner lives downstairs on this little thing on the wall because it's also my wall calendar. I just open it up to the correct month and put it in the holder so it's like this. But um, I keep supplies in it because. You know, I don't want to have to do the upstairs-downstairs thing every time I want to add a little something to my planner. So that's why I've got the glue sticks, I've got the scissors, I've got the little tabbies and the post-its and, you know, the index deals. I've got supplies in here. I've got stickers, I've got 
um, pages to take notes and make grocery lists. I don't want my grocery list bound into my planner. I want it on a separate sheet so that I can grab and go. I don't want to have to haul my whole planner to the grocery store. I don't, I'm not going to need to plan anything at the grocery store. I just need my list. So these are some bigger pieces of loose paper. So I've got washi tapes. Um, I've got some decorative stuff already in here. And I've got some sticky pages too because I made some changes. That's okay. Oh. And that would be because of the sticky page situation. Like I said, it's a learning process. Um, but anyway, it's, um, it's already full of a few assorted supplies. So it's almost like a combination supply journal planner. And I'm really loving that, by the way. And so anyway, I knew that I wanted to take a journal with me, and I figured I wouldn't need a lot of extra supplies, which was good because I didn't have time to get them together and didn't have space to carry them. So my planner held most of my little supplies. And the journal I picked was this one that I made a while back. And I did a video for it, and I'll, I'll put the link if I remember. But it was, I think I watched, oh gosh, I don't remember. I think I watched Packer Die, and she made an envelope journal that she saw from somebody. And I loved it, but I didn't have the right kind of envelopes to use. Um, but I had, you know, all of these junk mail envelopes. So that's what I used. And mine came out looking like this. And I made some, uh, There's, it's got all kinds of pockets and fold outs and, you know, slide outs. Remember, these were supposed to be at the top. They ended up at the bottom. And I just went with it. Anyway, this is what I decided to use. I took this. And I was afraid it might be way too big because I was only going to be there three or four days. But I thought, you know, I'll just, I'll make it work. And <laughs> I ended up filling up the whole thing. So it worked out great. And it also fit in my little carry-all perfectly along with my planner in this little pocket deal. So, you know, that cinched it. So that's what I took. And for supplies, I threw in just some extra um, kind of scraps of painted papers, and these are cleanup pages, and some mono-printed stuff, and, you know, just random little things. And over here I put some more blank papers to write on with lines for, you know, if I was in a journaling mood, which I was, so it actually ended up being a good thing. So just a few extra papers. And then in the pockets over here, I put these little gel pens. You know, the ones with the teeny tiny tips. It's like writing with a needle. Oh, I love these. These are so fabulous. And um, this pair of scissors I actually brought along to use with my crochet and stuff. So stuck it in there. And then just a couple of different glues, because I now had the glue sticks in my planner. And then I decided on pens. I was thinking colored pencils, but there was no way I could have just gone through all of my colored pencils and just picked out a few colors. It was overwhelming. So it was easier to just pick out pens. So I just brought an assortment of black doodle pens in different sizes. And just a couple of drawing pencils, a soft lead and a hard lead. And then a kneaded eraser and a regular eraser and a pencil sharpener. And then I brought some, uh, these are, you're in the wrong place. These are like Bic's version of a Sharpie. They're permanent markers and they've got that that size tip. Can you see? There you go. So I brought just a few. I figured maybe like for background colors or something. So I picked some light pastel ones and then I had this silver metallic one that I brought. And then these these came in a set with some other stuff. I didn't buy these outright. Um, but they're Prismacolor Premier drawing pens, which I love. I love that brand of just their black pens. And these are the colored brush tip pins. So I brought those. These are the only three I had. 
And then I just brought an assortment of the um, fine tip Sharpies, or I guess this would be the extra fine tip, whatever they call that little skinny, the skinny one that you're right with. And some of these are like on their last leg. They barely had any stuff left in them, so I brought them just to use them up so I could toss them. And that's all I brought. <laughs> um, and it, it, it was perfect. I mean, it, it all fit in my designated space, and um, I had enough variety, but wasn't so much that I was overwhelmed. It ended up working out just fine. And then here's what I did. I went through, and um, for the first three or four days were really difficult, you know, because I was still adjusting to being in close proximity to my mother. <laughs> so I journaled a lot. And I went back later, and I, I had to vent. I really did. I'll just tell you, I had to vent. And I vented over several pages. And then I went back later and read it and thought, oh, that's so ugly. I don't want to have to go back and read that again in this journal. So I needed to get it out and write it. But then I went back later, and I put... They, Mom went through a ton of Kleenexes. She had this esophagus thing going on. And they give you these little the little pocket packs they would bring three at a time and it was like every couple of hours they were bringing three more and three more because they don't give out the big boxes anymore at this hospital so i had tons of these plastic kleenex pack wraps and i just used those to cover over some of my venting that you know served its purpose but i didn't want to see it again and then just to use as some colorful backgrounds. So there's a lot of those in here, and that's what they are. It's just Kleenex packs. So, um, and I did just my usual, you know, that was directions on how to get there. I did my usual, you know, save receipts, stick them in. Um, on the pullouts, I kept some, uh, like a timeline of stuff when mom had her medicines, because she would always wake up saying, is it time for my pain pill or whatever, and her little surgery thing, which is really cool, because I hadn't, hadn't been in the hospital with someone who's had surgery like this in a long time and I didn't know they had this and in the big waiting room area they've got this electronic board it's kind of like the departures and arrival board <laughs> at the airport <laughs> and your patient has a number and it's color coded and you just look for her number so you can see if she's scheduled to start if she's in pre-op in surgery in recovery or out of recovery it was quite fascinating I just stared at the board and waited for her to change colors so that's what that was and then I doodled, of course. Um, these pullouts, I put some of them I don't have anything on because I didn't need to write anything on them, and that's okay. I can go back later and doodle on them if I just want to doodle, or I'll leave them, whatever. Um, you know, little anything the nurses left behind that wasn't gross, I stuck it in here. Um, I wrote down... You know, just because there were some funny things. There's a charge nurse came in and was talking to mom and, you know, and did the usual, can we get anything for you? And mom sends the charge nurse to go get her things like chocolate pudding and a clean pair of socks, which I just kind of thought was funny. To the charge nurse's credit, he did not bat an eye. He just went and did it. And funny things that mom said I wrote down. Um, mom can't have... Delighted with Ativan because she forgets to breathe. And this is pictures of my living accommodations. I slept on this little cot for nine nights. And that's the stuff. And there's my stuff. Nine nights. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Did I pull that one out? Yeah. That was some more. Some more little anecdotes and some more schedule of mom's medicines and oh gosh, this one have I glued it in? Possibly. No, there we go. Well, packaging off of a something. And I passed the time, you know, gluing these are some of the papers that I brought with me. They weren't already glued down. This was just a junk mail postcard. This whole thing was just junk mail, plain. So any of the pages that have been covered, I did while I was there. And, you know, that was just part of the process. Sometimes I didn't even write over them or put anything on it. Just the gluing the paper down 
felt good. Um, let's see. There was one nurse we called the red-headed devil, and one day she just sat at the nurse's station seriously all day at the computer, and I swore she was probably playing Candy Crush. She probably wasn't, but, you know, that's what it looked like. Pictures from the cafeteria, which was actually quite good. Um, doodle thing. Oh, Mom had a, a central line put in. And so I stayed in there with her, and I had to wear a mask. So that was the mask that I wore. And then I doodled on it. So I stuck that in there. Napkin from the cafeteria. And then some more little doodads. And, uh, tea. I had, there was tea at the little snack bar. Not snack bar, but, you know, that little room where they keep the stuff for the patients and the family members can go into and have some of it. And let's see. There's another pullout. And I didn't do, you know, after I got all that venting over with, I didn't do quite as much journaling as I thought I would. Um, but it's okay. The doodling part was, was good. And just the cutting and gluing, because I like that. That's really cathartic for me. Um, yeah, you know, me and the doctor had to have a come to Jesus talk, and uh, we have an understanding now. <laughs> and this, I don't know if you can tell, these are blue rubber gloves stuck in my car window, which at some point during my nine day confinement, my uh, window roller downer thing broke and the window fell down. This is the second time it's happened. My car is like almost 12 years old. You know, these things happen. It's the motor on the electric window. One went out, had to have it replaced. And this one went out, I don't know, I don't know how long my car window was down. It was in the, the hospital parking lot for nine days before I found it, because I didn't go back out to my car for nine days. And the window was down. And it was so funny, because, you know, locked up, or t what I thought was locked up tight, I accidentally left a door open in my car in my own driveway. You know, thieves came in, cleaned it out. My window was down probably a week in this hospital parking lot in Wichita Falls. Nothing was touched. <laughs> Nothing. My cell phone charger was still sitting there. Everything. Of course, it had rained inside my car. It was unpleasant, and the world's dumbest security guard was... He really didn't help me get the window up. He just sort of found me a pair of pliers and then watched me. So it, it was a fiasco. But anyway, uh, and I'm still driving around like this, by the way. I'm going to try to get Jason to take care of that this week. Cause I probably should be embarrassed by it, but it's just par for the course of my life. You know. Um, let's see. This is some stuff that I got out of the cafeteria, or they call it the dining room. There's a recipe that I will probably never make, but, you know, it was a piece of paper. It took up, you know, covered a, a blank space. That's what I needed. And another pullout. I actually wrote on that one, and that was the original postcard, which was kind of pretty. Um, let's see, I had to have me a Starbucks, I think that was on the way home, I had, oh yes, I stopped at the um, Starbucks in College Station, and there's probably another picture in here somewhere of that, and there's, oop, mom would not like it if I showed that picture, but it was actually quite funny, <laughs> so that's a little personal thing for me. Um, oh, and a friend came up and brought a whole bag of goodies. Um, she, brought, she brought some of the funnest little mask things. Just, you know, inexpensive, keep your hands busy type stuff. And one of them was like this Halloween bingo game that we played with. And these are some of the parts from it because there's a whole bunch I had extra, so I glued those in. Um, my dad, I went to see my dad while I was home, and he gave me a can of aerosol cheese, which he does almost every time I see him, and I don't know why. It's really very strange, but it's almost become like a thing. I, I don't eat the cheese, but I keep it because it makes me happy <laughs> when I look at it. And So I've got white cheddar, uh, great value, squeezed cheese now. Yeah. Um, 
some packaging from that's just that um, stuff that I bought at Cracker Barrel and a glove. I got one of the I think that's one of the giant ones from Mom's room that I doodled on. And some more. Well, how many are in here? Oh, okay. Another insert that's from the Halloween Doodle Game. So there's those. And more Doodle Game. Oh, yeah. And that's from when I went to the Starbucks. And I like to always when I go in places like that where they ask your name just to make up a name and I usually always make up some kind of a, a man's name. I use Bob a lot or Ralph or Fred you know just really traditional easy to remember and pronounce men's names and so I was Bob at Starbucks and the cashier said I look like a Bob and I told him that I, I get that all the time but it's funny when you do that the um, later person will never forget your name, you know, because it's kind of weird. <laughs> In fact, I didn't even talk to the barista. She was standing next to him, you know, making all the drinks and stuff, and then I went over to wait because it was at College Station. It was the one right by A&M, and there were about a bajillion college students in there, and when mine was up, she held it up. She looked at me. She goes, here you go, Bob, and I said, thanks. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little game I play with myself and okay I know I'm lame okay one more thing I want to show you before I bore you half to death because I saw this on Pinterest like just yesterday or the day before and I'll try to remember to put a link to my board I put it on or where I saw it or the girl's blog would actually be a good place to put it if I can find it because I think she's just a genius for coming up with this so if you haven't seen it here's what you need you need any journal it could be one that you make it could be one that you bought I bought these a while back on sale somewhere I'm sure they're in a haul video somewhere I don't remember where I got them or what I paid for them but anyway they're similar to a Moleskine cahier that I love and I use a lot but they were a lot cheaper it was a three pack so I picked these up and I used one of these so you need that you need probably a pair of scissors and then you need your washi tapes and these are my washi tapes, and I don't, I don't really have a ton of them, but I'm getting, I'm getting more. I'm slowly collecting, you know, Clarence Rick washi tapes, and occasionally someone sends me one, and I get all excited. So here they are, and I have a lot of these paper tapes too. These I just got the other day, these lace ones, and then these kind of paper trim tapes, whatever they are. I just keep them all in here. But you're going to need some washi tapes. Let's use this one. And what she did was she went through her composition book or whatever, and she put washi tapes on the edges of her pages. And she put two or three together and then just washi taped the edge. So you've got like this dual purpose decorative edge, plus it will hold several pages together you know, instead of gluing them, you can just tape them together, which makes them stay completely smooth and flat, and which I'm loving. Plus, you know, if you wanted to put another one on the bottom, you've got an easy pocket, or you could tape up the bottom and the top too to make it more sturdy, whatever. But I did three together, and just the one piece of tape on the edge, and I'll show you when I do it, I'll show you why I did that. That's totally optional. And I did them a couple different ways, you know, trying to figure out what was the easiest way or which way I like best. But I'll show you real quick. I mean, it's, it's really a no-brainer, but I just thought this was a genius idea. And these are some scraps I kept. I think someone, maybe Gina? I'm not sure if it was Gina. Someone had sent me a, a package of goodies and she had used some different washi tapes in the packaging and I was able to cleanly peel them off so <laughs> I kept them <laughs> okay so here's what we do we get rid of this first that's step one step two is you tear off a piece of tape you know what this is a really good way to use up some of those clearance rack tapes that kind of stick to themselves you know where you have to put them in the microwave for a few minutes those can be annoying so this this is a good way 
to use some of those tapes. Okay, cut or tear, doesn't matter, your piece of washi tape. And, okay, I'll see if I can explain this. I talked about this in the video where I was cutting the pumpkins out of a book. This probably has a word, and I don't, just don't know what the word is. But when you open a book, the pages automatically kind of spread out when you pull the center. See, they do that. So, um... You want to make sure when you're doing this that you don't get that effect. You want to keep the edges completely even. That's important or your pages will buckle. That's really the only tip trick that you need to know to do this. So what I usually do is just make sure I don't pull the cover open any more than about halfway. Because when you pull it back here is when you start getting trouble. So you can prop it up. Sometimes I will use a little something to prop it up. You know, just however, however works best for you. And you take your tape, and you can get fussy about this and measure it all even if you want. I don't really care. I'm just going to eyeball it and hope I get it close to centered this way. Some of them have a pattern, like this, this green one had a pattern, so it was easy to make sure that I was getting it straight. This one not so much, and that's okay. But what you want to do is, if you have to, you know, it's hard to get exactly the same amount on the back as the front. If you have to um, make the error, make sh if you have to make one side uh, wider than the other, make it the back side. So if you can't get it exactly straight, then do it on purpose. Make this edge a little bit wider than this one you just taped down. And here's why. Because the next thing you want to do is, and this is, I think this is how the girl did it on her blog where I saw this, is she just made a little corner cut, a little, I mean a little diagonal cut in the corners like that. You can do this however you want. I'm just I'm just saying I think this is what she did. This is what I did on these other pages. It works fine. Then you want to get if you want to stack two or three, pull those up. Now before you Stick them down. You want to make sure that your pages are even. Don't let them see like this. They're they're not. I, there's this one is a little shorter than the one underneath it. So make sure you don't pull the spine up and all the way. I know you're not seeing anything. If I do it the other way, I can't see what I'm doing. If I do it this way, you can't see what I'm doing. <sighs> okay. I just take this little piece and fold it over, and you want to get it kind of straight, if you can, and fold this one over, and that's torn, so we'll just rip it off, we don't need it. Okay, just like that, then fold this edge over. And you can see why you would want this side to be longer if you have to go that way, and that's because if the front is longer, when you fold this over, it's going to stick out. Let me show you. So that little fold over, over tab from the front will hang down below this and it will look kind of funky. And that's, I learned that back here, that's why I put the little strip of skinny tape trim just to hide that. You know, which is totally optional. If it doesn't bother you, leave it. Heck, go with it. But that, if you have some skinny tapes, you can use those to, to kind of cover up any, any imperfections that you need to. And then you've got these two pieces right here. You can turn this over, and on some of these, I folded it over just like that. And then on others, I snipped it off because, as you can see, it's longer than this one because we made the back our long side. So snipping is going to be the best option for that. There you go. Now just keep doing that 
and then not only do you get instantly decorative edges, but you get pages bound together so they're thicker to work on. Then you can go back if you want with your corner rounder and you know round off these corners at the end. Um, but anyway, there's that. I just thought that was a genius idea. I thought it was a great use of washi tape, not only decorative but functional and um, saves time and you know get your pages thicker without um, without any buckling or uh, the weird heavy texture that you can get when you glue and spray adhesives are so messy and dry adhesives are so expensive it's just it's a catch-22 you just can't win either way so I think this is a good solution so I'm going to keep going with this and then use this for something. I don't know what, but if you remember when I made this book, I probably said something like, I'm going to use this for something. I don't know what. <laughs> so anytime you make a journal and you don't have an immediate purpose for it, hold on to it because you just never know when your mom might go in the hospital and you need a journal and you don't have time to make one and you'll be so glad that you have some extras laying around and that was probably the universe knew exactly why you needed to make that journal so you know don't ever worry about not having a purpose for the stuff that you make the purpose will come if it's not there in the beginning so don't don't worry about that Okay. Oh, I've got Happy Mail out the wazoo. I just uploaded a Happy Mail video that I had filmed before I left on the trip, and then I came home to more Happy Mail. Isn't that an awful problem to have? Do you feel just feel sorry for me? <laughs> I know. It's just it's tragic all the Happy Mail I have. <laughs> Um, and we're having company this weekend, so I don't know if I'll get these videos done before that or not. But anyway. It feels good to be back, and I will um, be back, if not in a day or two, then one day next week with some more stuff to show y'all. So until then, mm, the end.